Welcome to chapter 9. This is one of the shorter chapter videos in the lineup, partly because we're now doing a considerable amount of crossover from this chapter, which is talking about people in the service. And this is going to cross over with studies in management, HRM, and it moves beyond strictly marketing. So what you need to be doing with this chapter is thinking about your other studies, studies outside of marketing. What do we know about how people as employees operate? So the key thought in the nature of, and one of the elements of services marketing is the person who delivers the service is the service. They are the embodiment of the service, the service promise, the IMC, and sometimes the service satisfaction. What this means is that given the human uh, propensity to anthropomorphize, to assign human humanistic characteristics to inanimate objects, we will easily associate a person with a service because that person has the human properties. So it's basically where we're going to bring in concepts uh, such as brand personality from IMC, where now you actually have a person with a real personality embodying the personality of your brand. So people form relationships with other people. Services are seen as the embodiment. Uh, services people, services staff are seen as the embodiment of the service. So it's easier for people to form a relationship with the person who provides the service and see that in their head as compatible with, oh yeah, I really like that service, when what they are talking about is the person who provides the service. Also because, you know, humans find other humans to be quite um, relatable, it's one of these things where it's easier to think about another person than it is to think about an abstract concept. So there's a couple of um, important models in here. One of them I'm going to get you to look at in depth, the service product chain. I want you to go again, play most of this. I'm going to push you back to the chapter. I just want to talk about a couple of things about here is that this is quite clearly a structural equation model. Look at the dependent pathways, look at the interaction between pathways, moderating variable here, employee satisfaction, service climate, service leadership. Now there are scales on all of those. That leads to an employee behavior. I would say there's employee behavior scales by the dozen out there. Employee retention, that's an um, external measure of like how long have you worked for the firm. Perceived service quality, serve qual, perceived customer value, different aspect. Uh, again, another scale on it. All these things can be numerically calculated. So you could actually see this as a series of numbers that have correlations um, through each of these pathways, positive, negative, that will contribute to a percentage point at the end here. From the conceptual point of view, the service profit chain basically works from the principle of it is worth investing in a service if that service demonstrably makes customers happy and employees happy. This is like, okay, look, it sounds obvious, but on the top of the list of things that people are getting wrong in capitalism at the moment is the forgetting that staff are important. Anytime you go out on a campaign to say, I wish to pay my employees less and make them suffer more, you're not making a compelling argument to the general public. The general public's not going to go, that's the sort of company I want to go to and trust with my business because they'll screw their staff for their profits and cut costs for me. No, basically you're going to see a custom, you're going to see a company like that who says, we're going to hurt our employees. And you're going to look at them and go, well, if that's the ones who you rely on, sure as hell not going to be trust. I can't trust you to do the right thing by me if you're prepared to screw your employees. So big businesses forget that 
Yeah, there's a certain point you get to in business where you forget that people are people and you just start seeing people as reactions in spreadsheets or you think that actually, well, I like that company. They cut costs by sacking staff. You forget that that's not how real people and ordinary people and people who are your customers operate. So basically service profits chains, big message is don't screw over your customers. Don't screw over your staff. As a result, win prizes, make money, get investors. So basically be smart about it. Now in terms of being the service deliverer, most of you are frontline, have got some experience with frontline being staff. It is difficult, it is a performance. Every day you go out there, you put on your game face and you go off and you deliver a script and you deliver a behavior. And you're pretty damn hardcore for doing that. Day in, day out, you put your, you put your character on, you put your role on, you get out there and you perform. And it's stressful, it's physical. Services are physically draining. Services are emotionally draining. Not only are you getting out there and putting on your game face, but you're suppressing how you want to react to circumstances. Someone comes in on a tear, screaming at you, shouting at you. Your natural inclination is to go full caps lock on them and tell them precisely what you think of them, their parentage, and a few other choice variables. But you can't because professional faces on, be nice, be polite. It's physically exhausting, it's emotionally exhausting. So respect that. Even if you forget when you go off and you, know, you go away from the front line, you forget what it was like, keep the notes. Remember that the people who are on the front end of the service delivery, who are the touchstone, they are the points that we have little boxes for on the service blueprint that we talked about in the service scape. They are real people and they will feel these things. So the key concepts of the chapter, well, pretty much this chapter is kind of like a part rallying cry, part theory framework. The things you need to be conversant with, boundary spanners, that is the role where you work for the customer because customer satisfaction is about co-production, but you are employed by the firm, so you have the firm's agenda, make money. You have the customer's agenda, to customer satisfaction. Multiple goals, multiple agendas, this can lead to stress and conflict, and you can lead to conflicts between what you want to do, solve the customer's problem, and what you're allowed to do, take the customer's money. In fact, one of the best short videos on the clash between um, boundary spanners, role stress, is in The Incredibles. So if you get the, uh, the movie The Incredibles and you watch the sequence where Bob works for the insurance company. Or Mr. Incredible works for the insurance company. You are seeing role conflict. Now it's used as a storyline device, but basically your job versus the customer satisfaction. Your job is to work for your organization, maximizing their profits. Your role is to maximize the satisfaction of the customer. When the two conflict, you have to resolve that normally you're not the most empowered and not the most powerful person in the company and yet that is your responsibility. The other aspects you want to look at is the personal role conflict, uh, why it's vitally important not to fake it to make it, why it's, uh, although there are some things about how you can teach yourself. Now, if you're not a naturally gregarious person and you take a customer service role that requires the happy face and the constant engaging with people, you're either going to have to teach yourself to be gregarious or you're going to have to find a different role. Personal role conflict is harmful to the person. A bad fit does more than damage your prospects of doing your job well, it damages you. The last aspect of this chapter that you should be looking at in terms of key concepts is the notion of emotional labor. We ask you to be happy. We ask you to smile. That is emotional effort. 
So physical and emotional, cognitive. You think about the service scope, we're looking for a physiological response. We're looking for an emotional response and we're looking for a cognitive response. All of those are labor tasks when you are the employee in the service scape environment. Cognitive labor, emotional labor, physical labor. Okay, cycle of failure, mediocrity and success. Book does it better than I'm gonna do. I want you to look at that. I also want you to be thinking about, you know, is this evident in the operations I'm part of? And how can I use this on the planning of my group assignments? Last thing is, welcome to the HRM Detour. There's a whole bunch of stuff in this chapter that if you have studied management or done a management subject, it's really beneficial to you. If you haven't done a management subject, it's going to be a good heads up. Basically, what you want to be able to do from a services marketing perspective is get the right team, give your team, trust your team, trust your products. Because this is the thing, if you don't trust your service staff, get rid of yourself. Keep the staff, sack yourself. Because basically what you're doing is your service staff are your product. If you're not prepared to endorse, guarantee, and back your product, you shouldn't be in that role. So get the right people, make certain they can do what they need to do. So give them the training, support them, and keep them. One of the frustrations, I speak here now from personal and professional experience, I have hired tutors, I've been in this business nearly 20 years, I have hired a range of tutors over time, I have enabled those tutors, I have taught them, I have trained them, and I have lost them each and every time because they've been promoted upwards, and I haven't had the resources, the money, to be able to say, stay with me, stay on this team, I will outbid because their value, and the value is huge, a good staff member's value. Remember, the staff member is your infrastructure. The staff member is, in your profit supply chain, the critical component parts that make the service work. So use everything you can to motivate, engage, and retain your crew. Get the right team, give them the assets and resources they need to do the job, and keep them. And also watch leverage that TV series about watch leverage in those sort of syndicate uh, crime teams to see how right people enabled, motivated, look at those dynamics, making certain you've got your dynamics in your team. So think about them, think about them as your crew, as your responsibility. All right, at this point, closing up, last things you need to do for this week, for this chapter, it's a smaller one, it's a quicker one. It's basically sort of a bit of a recovery chapter. The central message that you wanna be thinking about though is that every point through this when you are doing service design, service blueprinting, service scape, efficiency, it's people. People are going to implement your service. People are going to experience your service. Make certain that whatever you're thinking, whatever you're doing, whatever your IMC is gonna be, is compatible with having people. So you want to be thinking about your ethics of your behavior, you want to be thinking about how does it fit with the HRM, how does it fit to enable, how does it empower, does what I'm about to suggest, yes it might be more efficient but it takes away the employee's ability to feel that they are respected or valued. If we lose that employee it's not more efficient if I have to keep turning staff over so burning through staff by being an unpleasant boss is less efficient than being a good boss. And if you're in, if you're not in it to make the money, then get out of being a boss. Don't don't go to the management if you're not in it to do the job properly. Uh, if you're going in management just to be a sociopath, go big or go home. Actually, be a sociopath in public and live with the consequences. Don't do it in the workplace. So, close it up. If you need me, on the contact points. Again, it's a short chapter this week, so take your opportunity to catch your breath, get some downtime, get your resources together, make certain you're good to go, because there's a couple of big chapters coming up uh, with a lot of content, so you want to be relaxed, recovered, and ready to roll for when we hit the big closeouts. So around 11 and 12 gets heavy.